YouTube fight fans all over the world. It's your boy, the realist of the real. Yes, sir. I said it real talk boxing. It is a privilege and honor and a major blessing to be back with you beautiful people yet again. Virgil Ortiz Jr. versus the mean machine. Kavalovskis. I hope. <laughs> Virgil Ortiz, 17 wins, 17 knockouts, no losses, man. Very, very good prospect. Um, he's going to have a test tonight. He's going to have a test tonight against Mean Machine. I really didn't know who Mean Machine was until he faced Terrence Bud Crawford. And that fight really stands out to me. And I'm going to use that fight to kind of intertwine his fight tonight against Ortiz. Now, when I saw that fight, I was really surprised on how competitive it was. Mean Machine came out there mean. He came out there throwing punches with the intent to hurt Bud Crawford. Bud Crawford gets caught early. You can hurt him early. Possibly get him out of there early. But when I saw that fight, I seen Crawford getting, punt, getting caught in between his punches. I think Mean Machine hurt him twice in that fight. And despite what anybody says, Kowalowskis scored a knockdown against Terrence Bud Crawford. It was ruled a slip, but that was a blatant lie. He clearly got a knockdown against Crawford. But nevertheless, Crawford prevailed. Once Paul Crawford was able to gauge his distance, once Crawford started fighting in the pocket, getting close to Mean Machine and throwing those power combinations, running body shots, coming up with the hooks, finishing with the hooks, and hurting Kowalowskis. In the ninth round, he got him out of there. But until then, that was a very competitive fight. Well, I say it was, it was a lot more competitive from the first round to the sixth. But after the sixth round is when Crawford started really coming on, staying in the pocket, man. And uh, I thought it was a really, really good fight. And I never really saw Mean Machine fight again since that time. But I always had in my mind, man, I would, I'd love to see him fight, you know. But just so happens he's going to be fighting live tonight on the zone against Virgil Ortiz Jr. Now, a, a fight that comes out in my mind is Hooker. Maurice Hooker. When Virgil Ortiz fought him, this was supposed to be a major step up. And it was. It was. Now, Ortiz got him out of there in the seventh round, but Booker, not Booker, but Hooker suffered a, um, a dislocated elbow in that fight. Now, in my opinion, he was on his way out anyway. But the fight was pretty competitive. And when I saw that these two guys were fighting, I told myself, okay, this is what type of fighter I'm, I've been waiting to see <clears throat> Ortiz face. Somebody who has experience, ring generalship, and who can box. And who's not going to crumble under the pressure of Ortiz. Now, when I watch Ortiz fight, nothing spectacular stands out to me but his power. And his ferociousness. He has a will to win. And he tries to hurt you with every shot. But I knew coming in the fight against Hooker. That he was going to have to resort to a, a different tactic. He was going to have to pace himself. Take his time. Create openings. Wait for openings. And not throw every shot with the intent to knock Hooker out. And he did just that. He came in very reserved. But aggressive at the same time. And he got past those, those trying rounds in the beginning against Hooker. Because Hooker caught him with a lot of shots. Now, was Ortiz ever hurt in that fight? I don't think so. But Hooker was hurt multiple times in that fight. But what stood out to me mostly in that fight was the fact that Ortiz was able to switch up. The fact that Ortiz could stick with a game plan being such a young man. 
and not let his testosterone overwhelm what needs to be done, the task at hand. And that said a lot to me. It proved a lot to me. But I still think tonight is going to be a big, big test. I think Ortiz may get hurt in this fight. Ortiz might get dropped. But I think at the end of the day, Ortiz will prevail. Probably with a late round stoppage. I would like to see it go 12 rounds. I want to see this guy, this young man, how he swims in deep waters. That's what I want to see. But if he sees an opening, he better take it. Because Mean Machine, when he gets his opponents hurt, he jumps on them. Like a great white shark. Smelling blood, baby. So I know what the game plan is going to be with Mean Machine. Take the kid into deep waters and drown him. Ortiz should have the same game plan coming in against Mean Machine as he did with Hooker. With a little bit more intent to hurt Mean Machine. Mean Machine's not a small guy. He's got a muscular build and he's strong. But when he gets going, he leaves himself wide open. More so than Virgil Ortiz, who does get a little reckless when he gets up and going. But I think the basic skills, the basic fundamentals go to Ortiz, the younger and maybe stronger fighter. As far as punching power, definitely. But these are the type of fights that Ortiz needs to climb that ladder. I'll be watching it. Hopefully my app isn't acting up and I can do a live stream, man. I've been, people been asking me, yo, real talk, when you're doing a live stream? When's your next live stream? Hopefully that's tonight. Hopefully it is. But if not, like always, there will always be a post-fight reaction immediately after the fight. But hopefully I can get on and kick it with my supporters, my true supporters. So are you guys planning on watching this fight? There's a lot of other fights going on tonight. But this one in particular piques my interest, and it's the one that I'm going to be watching. If you're going to be watching it, let me know what you think. Put it down below, let your boy Real Talk know as always, respect all. Fear none, God bless you. The next time Real Talk Boxing, we up. We out of here, baby.